<laughs> What's up? So Next.js Conf was a few weeks ago um, where I was able to give a talk. Um, I'll put a link somewhere up there if you're interested. Um, but also at this event, Apple, sorry, Vercel, uh, released Next.js 13. Um, since then, I've spent some time playing with it and I'm developing some impressions and I'd like to share them with you today. Now, this video will be uh, my you know initial impressions of Next.js. It's not intended to be like a full in-depth review that will come later. Uh, what we're doing today is just kind of talking about some impressions while building an app. To develop said impressions, I actually built a small app to feel it a little bit. Um, this app is a trivia game. Uh, it's called Nervia. It's Next.js trivia or nerd trivia, depending where you land. Um, the, the the link to play the game the source code is under the like button. Let's look at it together here. So if we look at the screen, um, it looks like this. Nervia. In this Next.js nerd trivia app, you will be asked 10 questions. So let's start. And what we have immediately is a true or false question. HTML standard was published in 2014. I'm going to say that's true. Um, the common software programming acronym I18N comes from the term interlocalization. Uh, false. It's internationalization. First computer. So I'm just going to go through and answer these questions. And after I go through 10 of them, um, I get a final score. That's actually pretty good. And I get a summary of my answers. And from here, I can either replay, I can do it again, or I can share. Now, um, cool. This was built with Next.js 13 and really helped me understand what Next.js 13 is trying to do. Um, Next.js 13 like changes the way I think about, reason about, and build applications uh, for the web. And I'd like to talk to you about that today. I'm not going to talk to you about like all of the new stuff that was shipped, like Turbo Pack being the new web pack that's way faster, or the new image component, or the new, you know, it's not about new stuff, it's about my impressions building this app with Next.js 13. I think the first thing off the bat, of course, I'd notice is the new app directory. Um, the new app directory is a new way to do routing, where instead of like here, if, if you look here, like instead of, um, let's actually just open Nervia in, uh, in this. So instead of, you know, what, we, what we're used to with Next.js 12 and before is we have pages, right? And then a page like page slash something dot tsx. Um, would, you know, we'd export default, default function page, and we'd, yeah, we'd do this. We'd maybe even do h1. Hello, right? We do something like this. And now if we go to slash something, we get hello, right? That's what we're used to, is, is page single file routing, where if, if we look over here, um, pages slash something.tsx becomes localhost slash something, okay? That's what we're used to. The app directory changes that a little bit where instead of a file file name becoming a route, a directory name becomes a route. A directory then contains a file page.tsx that makes the page exist. Um, small change, we'll talk about that in a second, but by and large, I feel like this app directory is just the response to a lot of community feedback, um, specifically around you know applications on the web today being just way too large, um, and and us shipping and executing just way too much JavaScript, um, and I think the app directory aims to solve that, and I think it does a pretty good job of solving that. Um, I saw a tweet recently about this person who like ran all of the Next.js showcase apps through web page test and proves that all of them were super slow. Uh, hot take, good take, I think, because it helps highlight the value that Next.js 13 adds, which, which aims to make this smaller. It aims to make things smaller and lighter using new React primitives um, built to do exactly that. I'm talking, of course, about React server components, or RC. Um, to understand the value that server components add, we need to understand server-side rendering and think about its limitations, okay? So, um, you know, when React started, we were all doing client-side rendering, where we just had all our apps as single-page apps. Everything happened in the client-side. The problem with this is, of course, you have no actual markup in your page. You just include a JavaScript file, and then stuff appears after the JavaScript loads. It's kind of bad for SEO because crawlers can't, they have no markup to read besides the script tag, etc. So to remedy this, 
we got you know server side rendering where your react app is rendered to an html string or stream on the server side and then sent over to your browser um, along with the javascript bundle containing your react app when this bundle loads your app hydrates and becomes interactive right that's been the standard for a while server rendering client hydration um, there are limitations with this the, the the problems with this are two I, that i can see for this video anyway number one is the the finest granularity with this is the page like you server render a page and then you send the entire page over the network okay the page may take a long time to render on the server at which point your you know browser is just spinning waiting for work to be done that's one it would be cooler if we could have more granularity maybe at the component level hence react server components uh, number two our code base between client and server for React apps historically has been homogenous. What that means is you have, you know, your JSX tree, your React app, um, that is server rendered and sent over, but then your client bundle takes over and it's the same code. There is no delineation between server components and client components. There is no way of saying this stuff rendered on the server and send markup to the client, and this stuff is for clients only. Download that JavaScript and execute it. Um, until now. This is also what server components solves. Server components splits components into certain components that are intended to be rendered on the server, sent over, and client-only components that are intended to uh, maybe have their initial pane rendered on the server, but then you, know, you download them in a client JavaScript bundle and they hydrate. This split has never been, hap has never been a thing before, and this split from React server components is what Next.js 13 makes more approachable. So in the app directory of Next.js 13, every component is a server component by default. Every component is rendered on the server um, and then you know, sent or, or used to generate a static site first. Okay? Meaning if you want a client component, you'd have to opt into that. How do I feel about this? I feel like this is bittersweet. And we'll talk about the sweet first and then the bitter because I like to start with the sweet. I think it's, it's sweet because if every component is a server component, I don't have to think about bundle size. I could just like import something massive, use it to render my component. I could import like, you know, import moment from moment. I could import everything from moment and use just a format function to format a date. And I can trust that Next.js will render this on the server, will render my formatted date and only send my UI with my formatted date to the browser. It wouldn't send all of moment.js to the browser. I think that's awesome. Um, number two, what I find really sweet is I don't have to worry so much about leaking like secure authorization headers. Um, if you fetch something secure in your browser, then somebody can like inspect the network tab and can see your secret password, stuff like this. Um, with server components, whatever. Data is being fetched on the server. I'm sending whatever secure tokens I, I, I send from the server side. This never makes it to my insecure hostile browser, which by the way, I made a video about cross-site scripting and hacking and stuff. I'll put a link up there if you want to watch that. Um, but I think the best thing, the sweetest, most beautiful, honestly, the thing that I love the most about the app directory and all components being server components by default is that server components can be async. And this is amazing because here I have to show you, look, I'll show you a server component. If we go to app game, um, I think it's app game page. Um, this is a server component. Look at this. Oh my Lordy. Um, it's a component that's async and because it's async. I can just like fetch. Ah, I literally just await fetch trivia questions from the open trivia API, serialize them or reshape them and then just pass them to another component. This is data fetching, server component. Oh my gosh, async component, async await. Incredible, absolutely love this. I am here for this. In fact, I wonder if I could do this. <laughs> I, I've never done this before, but I'm inclined to try. Let's see, okay, yeah, totally work. Oh my gosh, so just like async await, like in line. Um, Pretty rad. This is my favorite thing because like data fetching has never felt so fluid, so smooth. Really, really, really appreciate 
the data fetching story with server components in the app directory. So those three things are the sweet things. Let's talk about the bitter things. Um, there's two that I can think of off the top of my head. Number one, I've never had to think about like these components are for the server. These components are for the client. I've never had to do that before. So there's a new level of like mental overhead that I think is actually good. It's painful in the beginning, but I think it's good because when I'm in client mode, when I opt into a client component, by the way, this is how you do that. If we look at game, game's a client component and you opt into a client component with this directive, use client on, on the top. That's a React thing, not an XJS thing. And I think when I'm in client mode, um, I'm way more careful. Like I don't import large dependencies. I keep them as small as possible to limit the amount of JavaScript I'm sending. It's actually pretty good. It's just thinking about it is, is, is a little bit hard. And, and there is a place for these client only components, right? Like for example, anything stateful, server state is usually not what we want because imagine like a hundred clients log into your thing and stuff's just changing everywhere because your server state that's serving all of them change. No, you want state, like use state, use context, use reducer, use whatever. You want the stateful hooks to be isolated to your clients. Makes sense. Also responding to event handlers makes sense. You can't click on a server, you know, so like on click, on change, whatever. Um, these things are for client components only. The mental overhead is there. It's not so nice, but it's worth it. I think they're working on you know, hybrid components that may or may not ease this. Um, number two, the data fetching story in client components just isn't the same. Sure, I can use SWR, I can use TAN stack query, whatever, but like you gave me async components, you gave me a wait in line, and then in clients I, I have, I don't know. There's also a friction point of like wrapping context providers because server components can wrap client components, but not vice versa. And so there's some friction there as well. Um, by and large, I think the, the pros outweigh the cons and just the convenience of doing a lot of things on the server and just knowing I'm not shipping way too much JavaScript out of the box. Um, plus one here. The other big change with the app directory is the new router. Um, you know, as we saw, we, we kind of looked here and we saw the, the old way of doing it is you have pages slash something, just to remind you, if we go to something, um, something.tsx and pages becomes a route here. In the new Next.js 13 app directory, single files do not become routes, but directories become routes. So in app, we have a root, which is app slash nothing. That's, that's indicated by this page. And we have app slash game. And that's by this. So it's the name of a route. So if you wanted to do the something here, we'd make a file called something slash page.tsx, um, something to, just so we don't have conflicts. And so we go here and just copy this. Hello, something to, and I'll, I'll, I'll be, I'll be, I'll be shameless. Why not? Uh, okay. You know, and now if I go to slash something to, I get hello something too, but notice we get a lot of other stuff around it. Why? What's that about? And this is the new support for layouts in Next.js, which I, I like, because in Next 12 and before you have this like underscore app dir up underscore app file that you would define some type of layout and that would just be globally applied to all your components. But at any given web app at scale, you don't just have one layout usually. Like your settings page will probably have a different layout. Your login page will have a different layout, etc. So I've seen people make like components called like this layout, that layout, whatever. And it, it hasn't, Next.js hasn't had like a really good layout story until now, I feel. How does this work? So we have here a root layout, literally at the root of app with my root layout with HTML, with head, with a title, um, with a title, uh, with some text and then children. And children is the child routes. So slash something to here, or in the case of game, um, we literally have slash game, which I think is pretty great. In fact, in the game directory, we have another file called layout, which is this like big purple box. And inside the game layout are the game elements. Um, layouts can be nested, which is pretty nice. And the cool thing is between route transitions, um, layouts are preserved, including their state. So your app feels nice and cohesive. I like the first class support for layouts. I think they're pretty great. 
in fact, part of this new router and um, part of this new router and having routes map to directories instead of single files is these directories can contain other stuff. Um, for example, Next.js like solves the problem of like forgetting loading and error states, which I often do um, because here. So for example, in the game directory, um, game is uh, the page is, is a server component and there's a client side to it, but things can load over the network. Server components usually stream in, etc. So if I make a new file called loading.tsx here, yes, I know it's, I'm working on it next. I will export default function loading. It's just a React component that returns. I can return like minimal skeleton UI here to show that something's happening. It can also be lazy and cause layout shift. Um, but here, look, I have instant UI. It'll instantly show loading. And then when the data is ready, it will swap it out um, with the data. On the server side, this uses HTTP streams. It's pretty cool. Under the hood, this is using a suspense boundary um, that shows a fallback loading while it loads my component. Um, and all this just with a text file. I also could add error.tsx, which will give me an error boundary as well if something breaks. Um, pretty nice having a directory per route so I can put these things inside. Um, I, I like it. So the, what, what we looked at was server components, the problems they solve. Again, bittersweet. We looked at um, the layout support, which I think is pretty great. And we looked at um, this instant UI with loading and error boundaries. I think it was pretty sweet. That's kind of all of the impressions I have. There is a learning curve with server versus client components that we talked about, but as I said, I think it's worth it. Probably one final thing that I really like is that the whole roadmap for this app directory that is currently beta, not intended to be used in production, is here. So things that I'm complaining about, like shared components, seems like it's being worked on. Things that I complained about, like um, client side data fetching, seems like it's being worked on. In fact, there's a, an upcoming hook called use, use, not use something, use, that helps the data fetching story um, in React. There's an RFC, I'll post a link to that under the like button as well. But for now, those are my impressions. I wanna know, what do you think? How do you feel about it? Um, leave a comment below or at me on Twitter. If you wanna play Nervia, there's a link for that as well under the like button. Um, but that's been it, I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.